In this section, you will learn how to add domain models and create database using entity framework. So these are the things you will learn in this section. Understand entity framework, create domain classes, add database access class, setting connection string to connect to the SQL server, adding DB set, create database using entity framework methods. And finally, we will verify the database in SSMS that is called SQL Server Management Studio. And then at the end of this section, I will give you some exercises. So let's understand what is Entity Framework. Entity Framework is the tool we use to access the database. Uh, before Entity Framework, developer used to write ADO.NET code to save or retrieve application data from the underlying database. This was a cumbersome and error prone process. Developer had to create domain classes and then had to replicate all those classes in database to store the data. Entity Framework Object Relational Mapper automate all these database related activities and automatically map our domain classes to the database. So now developer can work at high level of abstraction without worrying about creating and updating the database. Entity Framework provide a class called dbcontext. Uh, which is the gateway to our database. A DB context can have one or more DB set, uh, which represents the table in our database. We use link that is called language integrated query to query DB set and entity framework translate link query to SQL query at runtime. Then it opens the connection and read the data from tables and add back to our DB set in DB context. If we add, modify or delete any domain class associated to the DB set, then also Entity Framework keep track of those changes and update the database when we run update database commands. So this is how Entity Framework works. There are two different approaches we can follow with Entity Framework. One is code first and another one is database first. In code first approach, we first create domain classes and then we add database migration and run update database commands. Entity Framework then create the SQL statement and run it on database to create, update or delete the associated table into database. DB first approach does exactly the opposite of this process. We will use code first approach in this course. So next we will create two domain classes model and make for our application. So let's open up Visual Studio and create new project. Click web from left menu and select ASP.NET Core web application. Let's name it room and select the location of project. Click OK. Make sure web application is selected on this screen and latest ASP.NET Core version is selected in this drop down box. As I suggested earlier that we will learn login based authentication in this course. But here I am not selecting change authentication because it will add all the database access classes and migration in your application. In that way you will not be able to learn things deeply. So let's do not select it at the moment and we will code everything ourselves uh, to understand the concept deeply. We will create new project later in this course to cover authentication. So click OK. So our project is now ready for code. Right click on model folder and select add class. Name it make. And now we will add the properties for this class. So to add the properties, uh, we do have code snippet. If you are not aware of code snippet, it is a very useful feature in uh, Visual Studio. Using code snippet feature, you can type the snippet code and by pressing tab twice, you can add a ready-made code that you can alter as per your need. So let's try to create the first property using code snippet. Type prop and press tab tab. It will add the default code uh, for your property. 
now you can easily update the type and name by pressing tab so let's add two properties to uh, make class select type int and uh, name it id and add another property name In the similar way, uh, we will add model class. Let's add the property ID of type int. And add name of type string. Seems I have done some mistake in make. Ah, yes, it is. It should be string type. Next, we will add inverse property, the other side of association, because model is also associated to the make. So prop make make. This is our navigation property. I am also uh, going to add foreign key property in this class. Prop int make id. So when we follow this naming convention like name of parent class and its id, entity framework will know that make and make id are referring to the same thing. So entity framework will not create extra column. But if you will not use this convention, for example, you want to make this property something like this public int make fk then you will have to add attribute like this to tell entity framework that associated id is foreign key to make class otherwise entity framework will not create foreign key reference to this field in database so we'll have to add attribute something like this foreign key and class name So we have created both the domain classes. Now we will add our application DB context. DB context is a class in entity framework API. It is a bridge between your domain class and the database. This is the primary class that is responsible for interacting with the database. Let's create a folder name app DB context. You can name it whatever you want. and add our database access class. Let's name it room db context. Similar to entity framework six, we will have to derive this class from uh, db context. Control plus dot to import the namespace. It's defined in Microsoft Entity Framework Core. Now we will add a constructor and use DB context options. This is a generic class, and we will add our room db context as parameter in this generic class and name it options then we'll pass this option to the base class of db context next we will add connection string to tell our db context that where is our database in previous version of dotnet connection string was configured in web.config but .NET Core have introduced a new file named appsetting.json for application level configuration. Let's click on this file and here we will have to add a node named connection strings.
under this node you can add multiple connection strings as per your requirements so for our application we will add single connection string we need to add it in key value pair so i am naming it default and and defining connection string server equal to localhost localhost or dot represents the local server in case if your database server is not running on local system you will have to provide the name of that server database equal to room user id equal to sc and password whatever the password you have set at the time of sql configuration you will have to provide the password here so i have set uh, it to the sa so defining as password as sa if you are using windows authentication you can use integrated security equal to sspi in place of user id and password now we will add our application db context to start as service and there we will use this connection string so open up startup.cs and search for configuration service and add services dot add db context this is a generic class and here we will pass our db context named room db context and then we will use uh, lambda expression options goes to options dot use sql server and then we will pass our uh, connection string using configuration dot get connection string and then we will pass the name of our connection string that is default uh, here in our case and now the final step of configuration is to add db set to our application db context the db set class represents an entity set that can be used for create read update or delete operations the context class must include the db set type properties for the entities which map to the database table and views if we will not add any of db set those will not be mapped to the database and migration will not add that entities to our database so let's add the property of type db set and pass make as parameter add the reference by clicking control dot and let's name it makes similarly add db set for our model class so we have added all the domain classes and added all the configuration related to the database next we will add database migration we will have to use package manager console to add migration uh, that is usually located at the bottom of code window by default if it is not visible you can make it visible by clicking the tools nuget package manager and package manager console let's add our first migration add migration and you have to provide the name of that migration that name should describe about the changes we are going to migrate so we should name it properly to avoid confusion in future as i am going to add model and makes i am naming it add model and make to db also about migration i would like to suggest that we should add domain models in small small steps and keep those migrating to our database so that we can easily test it if we will add bigger changes in migration it may happen that something can failed and we will not have any clue that what went wrong so take baby steps when it comes to the migration after adding the migration a migration folder will be created and few files will be added into that folder let's look at one of the file you can see entity framework perfectly added primary key and foreign key in migration now we will run update database command to create the tables in our database
and yeah we are done let's verify if our database tables are created or not so open up sql server management studio click refresh button and perfect our database has been created click on plus sign on database and let's verify the tables so entity framework have perfectly added two tables mix and model and id is set as primary key in our mix table and similarly id is marked as primary key for our models table as well make id is perfectly set as foreign key so that's it we have completed all the weekly tasks in this session you can download the source code from the git repository I have provided the link below in description. I am giving you an assignment to add third class named features with two properties, ID and name. Although I have not explained about setting max length and not null restriction on any column, but try to do at your end by doing some research. Definitely uh, you will learn more things than I am teaching you if you make a habit to do your own research. Then add new migration and update database and verify if everything is correctly added to your database. In coming week we will understand few more things about entity framework for example how to add constraint on a column, how to roll back migration if some mistakes happened. Then we will add a user interface to add, modify and delete the makes. Then we will use bootstrap class to improve our design. So let's see you in next week. Bye bye.